So I just saw the most recent episode of Flash. I have to let it sink in. I have to... I have to let it kind of, um... Kind of absorb into my conscious what I just saw. Okay. I think I'm ready to talk about it now. Wow. Alright, um... Sorry, literal seconds after the episode end, I turned you on. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, alright. Uh, this probably goes without saying, but spoiler warning, if you haven't seen the newest episode of Flash, you do not want to watch this video. You've been warned. Okay. So, it, it should have clicked in my head um, that this was going to happen. Uh, when Iris found out Barry was the Flash. So, but, all right, so a lot happened in the episode. There was a massive progression in the episode. We learned a lot, and I'll get into that. Massive progression occurred in the episode. And then the last 30 seconds of the episode undid the entire episode because of time travel. And I have been tricked by that every time it happens to me. Every time anything like this happens, I'm always fooled by it. There, uh, 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 an episode of Young Justice comes to mind where every character died, but then it turns out it was just a simulation, and you don't find that out until the very end of the episode. In this episode, let's start at the very, very beginning. So, Clyde Martin's brother, Mark Martin, is alive and has stronger weather wizard powers than Clyde did and he's out for Joe's blood because Joe killed Clyde and uh also like I was checking sorry this just popped in my head I was checking my pulse throughout that episode I've never been more stressed in an hour of watching TV because there were Iris Barry moments that were really awkward and stressful there was, there was a lot of conflict in this episode. A lot of conflict. There was physical conflict, there was emotional conflict, there was relationship conflict, there was conflict everywhere. There was trust barriers being shattered. This is probably the best episode of Flash. What a way to return. Okay, let's get into it. So, Mark's out for Joe's blood. And Mark is really cool. I like Mark, Mark's pretty cool. And uh, they devised a way to cancel out the Weather Wizard powers Yet, Joe is still kidnapped by Mark and ruthlessly beaten within like an inch of legs broken, his face all bloody, it's rough. And uh, we basically leave Joe on the, uh, the waterfront with Clyde or with Mark making a tsunami going towards the city. And uh, Barry's running back and forth, creating a wall of air to theoretically disperse the power of the tsunami. And in doing so, he ran so fast, he runs back to the start of the episode, which undid all that happened. Now, what did happen? What happened that is theoretically undone? Because keep in mind, all right, so for those of you who don't know the theories of time travel, <sighs> Barry's running incredibly fast up and down the beach, okay? Timeline. Barry's running really fast up and down the beach. He runs so fast, he goes back in time to a moment where there are two flashes, okay? He goes back to a moment where there are two flashes. The first flash on the left goes through the timeline that we see throughout the majority of the episode. To run back and forth, to come back in time to be the second Flash that runs back and forth. Theoretically, at that exact moment, two Flashes exist in the same timeline, creating a paradox. So what happens? This Flash goes on the same journey that this Flash did to repeat the exact same uh, series of events. So essentially, this Flash is meaningless. This is, this is our Flash, okay? This past Flash, this was future Flash, but this Flash was there, okay? He, he went back running down the beach. Now, um, there is this timeline. This timeline is what was left when Barry ran so fast, he went back in time, okay? So this world is dead. 
In this world, the Flash failed to save Central City. The tsunami hits the city and kills millions, theoretically. All that shit went down, okay? But that's not actually what happened. At least not from our perspective in our timeline. Barry has gone back to the beginning of the episode. Things that occurred in the episode that didn't actually happen. Uh, number one, Iris and Barry admit their feelings for each other and they kiss in front of their dead, dying, or dying father, which I thought was rough. Um, number two, turns out that Joe is on the opposite side of what appears to be a channel of water. Once again, questioning where exactly Central City is. Uh, despite everything they say of it being in Missouri, there is no body of water in Missouri large enough for a tsunami to form. Not even the Great Lakes. And that's not even near Missouri. So my theory of Central City being San Francisco holds true at this moment. Anyway, so those were some powerful binoculars Joe was using to take a look at his kids. Anyway, um, and so there's that going on. Uh, when uh, Barry and Iris kissed, I was like, finally, um, I'm sick of them dancing around each other. And then the second Bi uh, Iris found out that Barry's the Flash, something clicked in the back of my head, or it should have clicked in the back of my head that this probably wasn't real. Because whenever anybody finds out the secret character of any hero, they usually die. Okay, so that was, that was a little rocky. Um, I'm going to kind of move on past some other things, because there was, there was some stuff, I'll be honest, but I don't want to describe the whole episode to you, because I want you guys to leave some stuff up for yourself. There are two moments in this episode I'm going to talk about. Number one. At one point, Weather Wizard Mark uh, storms the uh, precinct. And in doing so, hits the captain with a bolt of lightning. The captain is then hospitalized and is potentially paralyzed from the waist down. The reason I'm bringing up this moment is because uh, it was very subtle very early on. It was told to us that the captain was gay. And at the hospital, we meet his partner, whose name escapes me if we actually hear it. And this episode touched on something that I never thought it was going to. The visitation right um, controversy for homosexual relationships. When the partner wanted to see the captain, he was told it was family only. And you could see the pain in his face when that happened. And Joe was like, he's his fiance that makes him family. And then he was let in. And that is a big controversy because, well, in my opinion, Anybody be like, just that shouldn't fucking make a difference. They should be allowed to visit them regardless of everything because they care. They're like, they're romantically involved or their family. It does not matter. They should be allowed to visit their partner and they, the hospital should not be able to tell them no. But that was, that was a powerful moment for me. And I'm sure other people watching the episode had a similar reaction and I'm really I'm, I'm really thankful that the creators of the show did this because it, it's like, um, it's like taking a stand almost like we think that this problem in America is wrong and it shouldn't be this way. So I'm, I'm giving those guys a thumbs up for doing that. I think that was, that was a really cool moment and I was really well acted. Also the cinematography in this episode was really good. I don't say that that often, but just some of the angles and how it was all shot was pretty cool. Uh, sorry, I'm going to talk about one more thing, and then I'll talk about the big thing of the episode. Um, Eddie is clearly not okay with what's going on between Iris and Barry, and let's be honest, he has every right to be worried because of what Iris eventually tells Barry, that she you know, essentially loves him, and, um, you know, that would cut Eddie out of the picture. And, uh, he was pretty cool in this episode. He got it done. He was like, we're going to fucking do this. And, uh, I do want to refresh everybody's memory that his last name is the last name of a reverse flash. Let's talk about the big thing of the episode. The confrontation between Cisco and Dr. Wells, who apparently isn't named Dr. Wells. He is Eobard Thawne or whatever his name is. He is the, the reverse flash that we all theorized was going to be present in the episode. We all thought that Eddie was going to turn into this character because of the last name. But it turns out that Harrison Wells is a pseudonym for Thane, Thon, whatever the fuck his name is. I'm gonna call him Thon. And um, it turns out that Harrison Wells 
is Reverse Flash, and he is out to kill Barry. Uh, he is trapped in the past, unable to return to the future where he's from. The future he is from is a uh, one where Barry goes missing after Infinite Crisis. Okay, so, and in, in this confrontation, he kills Cisco, just flat out, just killed him. And um, that, sh that should have also clicked in my head that this wasn't actually real because uh, Cisco has been shown in later episodes as being alive. So, yeah. I, oh, God. So much happened in that scene. I'm trying to actively remember exactly how it went down so I could talk about it. Uh, but basically, here's, here's what we know. The number of reverse flashes has theoretically, theoretically gone from three separate reverse flashes to one. Harrison Wells is Thawne. He did go back in time, and he... It's literally just him. There is no Professor Zoom, and there is no Thawne. It's just Wells. It is just Wells. He's the only one. And that's surprising to me. Um, I was so convinced that it was going to be multiple multiple reverse flashes, but that just is not the case. It is just Wells. And it was quite the scene. Um, a little weird uh, at moments. And we discovered quite a bit. God. Um, also, sorry, this just remembered. I remember complaining that when uh, Wells killed Stag, they never brought it up again. They fucking brought it back. And I'm glad they did. That was a very big, like, what happened, you know? And um, they brought it back, which was which was cool. Okay, so Barry's gone back in time to before all of this happens. Logic would say he's going to prevent a lot of what happens from happening, but there are some things that he was not privy for that would logically play out the exact same way. For example, the confrontation between Cisco and Harrison Wells. Barry was unaware of this occurring, and he was not there when it happened. So theoretically, while Barry may be able to change some things from occurring, Cisco's still gonna die. Theoretically, Cisco would still die, because Barry was unaware this occurred, so he can't fix it. What he can potentially fix is saving Joe from being kidnapped and um, probably like he and Iris aren't going to admit their feelings to each other so it's uh, it's a little strange also there was a moment where Iris told Barry that she doesn't feel that Linda is the right guy or right girl for him and I'm just sitting here going like yeah she's not she's actually supposed to marry Wally West who um, would be Barry's well in some in some canons it's Barry's kid um, because Iris West, um, some instances, it's, it's a, it's a strange, uh, relationship, but in most cases, uh, Kid Flash, Wally West, uh, basically, before the Speed Force was introduced, he recreated the accident and then gave Flash his powers and gained powers himself. So, yeah, it's, um, it's, there's a lot of shit, uh, but it was, it was an excellent episode, and we learned so much. I'm almost tempted to watch it again to try and pick up on more, but it was it was intense. It was good. Um, it it's it's going great, and it's just it just goes to show how good of a show Flash is. Like Arrow couldn't have done something like this. Well, that being said, Arrow comes back tomorrow or tonight, rather, and um, I'm sure it will be just as awesome. As, uh, as, well, actually, no, it won't be just as awesome. There's no way it can be as cool as what I just saw. But I'm sure it will be very good in its own right. And, uh, that's all I have to say about the new episode of Flash. And, uh, I know this doesn't really count, but it is my birthday today. And I turned 21. And it's really cool. Nah. And, uh, tonight, me and my bro are gonna go out and party. It's gonna be a good time. This, I know this doesn't really count as a birthday video, but I didn't have time to make anything else. So, uh, thank you all so much for watching. 
I hope you all enjoyed tonight's episode of Arrow, like I will, and I will talk to you about it tomorrow. So thank you very much. Have a good one, guys. Oh, and thank you to all of you who wished me a happy birthday. Bye.